To supply the conveniences for modern living, the products we create and build grow ever more complex. Today's automobile, for example, may call for as many as 14,000 parts. And each part must be as precise as thousands of pairs of hands and eyes and thousands of human brains can make it, if the final product is to be just about trouble-free. No one plant or single factory can make all the many kinds of parts. It takes thousands of separate suppliers. And in every supplier plant, each man and woman must work with a feeling of responsibility toward the eventual owner of what it is he's helping to make. On the conscientious contributions of every single one of them depend the success and reliability of what is made by others and the satisfaction of all the others who use them. The fundamental freedom of America is our freedom of choice. All of us want our choices in whatever we buy. Our personal choices of color, of model, of trim, of engine, transmission, or steering, as well as of radios, of heaters, air conditioning, accessories, and a host of other special options for convenience, safety, comfort, and appearance. On a single four-door sedan, there are seven million possible combinations that may be asked for by any one owner. The makers could be called upon to build for years without ever turning out exactly the same car twice. The owner's choice for this chassis, among many other options, is for a red body. The first show of color is in the wheels, while the body of the right shade must be on its way already from the body plant a quarter of a mile off. many parts, accessories, and special equipment must meet at their rendezvous. The call is for individual choices, for custom service on a mass production basis. And the response must be a fine accomplishment of meeting individual needs and personal tastes in terms of millions of individuals. Modern assembly is timing and teamwork as well as organization. And every year, to make way for changed models, everything may have to be re-timed, re-teamed, and reorganized with new tools, new assembly line fixtures, and new working procedures. And just as all the parts that must fit together must be there at the right time from thousands of plants all over the country, so from all over the country and all over the world come the people who put them together for other people in thousands of different places. Giant teams of working people all fitting together. Tens of thousands of people, all different, different in ability, in degree of interest, in each day's varying enthusiasm for the job, differing in understanding and in their pride of workmanship, different in age, in skill, in length of experience, and in the way you feel from day to day, presenting human problems which are challenges to quality control. The best of us may occasionally make a mistake. The best of tools may call for adjustment. So in the all-American game of making things for ourselves and others, there must be catchers as well as pitchers. The inspector's job is to catch any slip and eliminate it from the finished product. The performance you get out of whatever you buy, the long time you can use and enjoy it, the pride you can take in it, depend not only on the engineers who design it and the men who make it, but also on the painstaking conscientious vigilance of the quality control inspector who checks and double checks all along the way. So the way we Americans do it, quality in the things we buy is designed in, built in, and inspected in from start to finish. And to help them make sure quality is built in and checked in, 
new devices are continually being developed. This machine automatically checks dimensions to a ten thousandth of an inch. A part deliberately made too small is put into the machine as a test of its efficiency. Out it goes. When products were simpler years ago, inspectors were few and far between. But in these days, with more complicated things to put together, inspectors are many, and inspectors are important. And even after a product has passed all the factory tests, it still must meet the approval of the conscientious dealer who sells it. For in his turn, the reliable dealer places his own pledge of quality on everything he sells. He knows that the user finally dipped on the dealer's own fidelity. <laughs>